everybody, Dave here again, Syndicated Pipe Club, this last Thursday of, of, of the second month of December. As always, I have Greg, the Badger Piper, with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I am doing quite well tonight. How are you? It's been a long day. I've spent this particular recording day, since it's Friday, this week, in the office, editing and editing and editing. I very rarely put this much time in, but for, for a hobby, but 12 hours in one day plus, it's a little much. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, it's uh, being confined to one room uh, is uh, kind of rough. Yeah, but I also have other things that I need to do in this room, too, which means this, the, the time that I was, you know, waiting for videos to render or, you know audio to uh to uh do what i uh, render i guess i don't know what the audio version of that is uh, <laughs> i spent on minecraft and i have to be at the computer which is in this room so i went somewhere virtually oh, of course my butt however tells me i've been staying in one place today for far too long Yes. What uh, about you? How's your day been? Oh, uh, you know, it's been okay. Uh, just uh, kind of uh, hanging out around the house day today. Uh, you know, not to, <laughs> you know, today we had our uh, first uh, glimpse of snow, which uh, uh, yes. was uh, the white, white stuff. stuff. Yes. So I was, uh, so we were kind of stuck inside uh, for the majority of the day. But, uh, you know, besides that, it's just uh, dad stuff. And, uh, you know, my uh, Milo is moving around uh, a lot more with uh, crawling. And uh, the other day he managed to make it to the stereo and <laughs> pressed a button that caused me to have to uh, spend like five minutes at, uh, at the stereo to solve the problem that he created. And even today, just uh, while I was with, um, I was FaceTiming with my mom, with Milo, like he loves to just grab the phone out of my hand, look at it. And uh, he knows now like to look for buttons on it, like virtual buttons. And uh, when he finds them, he goes to press them. Sunset and evening Kind of like that. And I dropped my phone. Clear call for me <laughs> and me. Well, if we're going to hit hit with a copyright strike, that's enough to do it. Right. I doubt it, though. I think the longest Johns are uh, copyright free, like not free, but they the digital rights management. They like, use your stuff, but let them let them. Let them let people know who did it. So that's who that was. Yeah. One of these days, I might try a whole episode with them in the background just to see. Yeah, I'd be cool with that. But yeah, he is uh, just developing more and more with uh, getting into things that he shouldn't. And it's only going to get worse from here. But I, I, I do love the, the curiosity that he has. So what are you smoking tonight? Actually, it is a uh, new tobacco for me. It's uh, I have a friend that, uh, well, an online friend that uh, lives in Russia. And in Russia, they have a pretty decent uh, pull of uh, Sam Gowith blends. So he was able to pick up for me some that I've been trying to get over the years that uh, I've never been able to pick up because whenever those blends come into stock, I usually pick up a uh, Enerdale 
and uh, since that's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, but this is uh, one that I've been trying to try for years, and it's called a uh, Grusmore. And uh, it is definitely a Lakeland blend. Like, uh, and it's a. Uh, I hope that's your Lakeland pipe, because if it wasn't, it is now. Uh, yes, it's it's one of my Lakeland pipes, and I have several now. Uh, well, <laughs> two, uh, because I just uh, I enjoy Lakeland. So, um, yeah, I've got a few Lakeland blends that I enjoy, like, but I just use these. Mm-hmm. No, um, the very first uh, pipe tobacco that I ever reviewed was a Lakeland blend because I was at Enerdale because it was my first experience of smoking it. And uh, like it was the first blend to kind of leave me wowed. And uh, like right after the, the, you know, smoking it in my cob, I um, immediately went out and uh, purchased a pipe off of eBay for that to be a, a briar pipe to be my uh, Lakeland uh, pipe. Nice, nice. Me, I, I'm not smoking anything so uh, difficult to get. Well, yes and no. I still have to have it shipped in from the U.S., but that's a lot closer than Russia. And and I can get this in the States. It's just, uh, you know, how certain ones mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. and Sam Gaywith is one of those things. It's right up there with uh, Pembroke and all the uh, Tilbury and all the... Uh, Oh, why am I not getting there? I'm naming their tobaccos, but I can't get Esoterica. the name out. Thank you. All the Escoterica blends that are so scarce. I yeah, I would put um, Sam, Gowith, and Gowith, and Hogarth blends one step lower than uh, Esoterica blends, because I at least have a chance to buy something when uh, they get a shipment in, whereas... Uh, I know uh, Esoterica just goes like that. For me, they're the same, because if I see them, they're gone. Because mm. Grossmore is one that I've always wanted to try and have never been able to get. But, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah I, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, because... Uh, it does have like a, a floral scent to it. Like um, it's like a mixture of um, floral and uh, anise. Um, but like a little bit of licorice, I think. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, but I, again, like I, uh, if I had the ability, I would just smoke uh, Lakelands all day. Uh, that would be like my, I, I would, I would have to really think about it, uh, but I would uh, consider trading uh, my blends for all just uh, Lakeland blends in uh, similar quantity. And if I had to pick one blend that uh, uh, kind of was like a, a never-ending tobacco jar, uh, it would probably be uh, Enerdale. Or, uh, and hey, uh, Bruce Moore might uh, make it up there. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what is uh, the blend that you're smoking in your cob today? Cherokee from the Country Squire. Mm. So, like I said, not quite as hard for me to get, but still has to come from another country. Right, right. And what what is that blend like? It's good. I I mean, it. I don't have a huge you know, you review on it. But for, for an aromatic, it, it is what it is. It's a good tobacco. Of course, I, I haven't run into one of John David's tobaccos that I haven't liked yet, so there's yeah. that. He's good at what he does. I, yeah. Uh, is that like a vanilla aromatic? No. If it was vanilla aromatic, I wouldn't be smoking it. Mm. I'm not partial to vanilla. Mm. Not even in ice cream. That kind of makes me weird, but that's beside the point, I guess. Oh, no, we have our, I mean, I get it. Like, I'm a big vanilla fan. It's one of my favorites, uh, both as a tobacco and just as a general flavor. But, uh, you know, gotcha. I, I get it. Um, 
Like uh, we all have our, our likes and our dislikes. Now, if um, it tasted like chocolate, that'd be different. Mm. Of course, I haven't run into a chocolate tobacco that I've liked, so I don't think you can get chocolate flavor in tobacco properly. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, it's funny because, like, the classic kind of, like, pipe blends, uh, that, that pipe smell, uh, for me, it, it kind of is a mixture of vanilla and kind of like a cocoa, kind of like aroma. No, this is just one of your, like, standard uh, non, non air quotes topped aromatic gotcha. blends that uh, it, it's, just, it's just it's just tobacco there's I, I think it might be cased but I am mm. so far out of my palate anymore that I can't really tell when I was when I was doing when, when I was doing the show as Maple City I took steps to develop a bit of a palate and I used to be able to tell but I, I, I really can't I really can't now and, and you know, I might be getting the sweet taste from the fact that I'm I'm drinking this this pop here. Uh, uh you know, uh, that's when you just kind of like BS it a bit, and you're just like, yes, I take uh, taste kind of like some notes of. Uh, I taste some uh, notes of Coca Cola and sugar. So, yes, yeah, so I, I can taste a bit, a bit of a 1950s Coca Cola topped with a a little bit of a, some. Barks root beer that's been finely aged and, and cellared from the 1980s. Yes. Yes, yes. It's even a vintage paper straw, and I can even taste some of the, some of the cup it's been stored in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fortunately, people, that is not the case. This is not 30-year-old yes. pop and a 30-year-old cup because it would have been it would have leaked out by now it's just a cardboard cup yeah i was just thinking it would be funny if uh someone <laughs> made a tobacco that was uh <laughs> in the style of um the 80s and 90s uh scratch and sniff kind of uh uh things but like um the the disgusting ones like the ones that purposely smell bad <laughs> I don't know if we'll make it on air, but I, I I feel like I should email that to the Country Squire Radio now. <laughs> John David, could you make a scratch and sniff tobacco, please? You know, one that smells bad, <laughs> like those scratch and sniff things you used to get like in a, the 80s. Like the garbage pail kind of, I think they had some scratch and sniff stuff that was purposely <laughs> yeah, disgusting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, I'm I'm now I'm, I'm I'm now in fairly regular contact with Bo York. I would never never live that down. <laughs> uh man, I I, uh, I I could just see the next time we have a have a flashcraft thing. Doc, what were you thinking? Why would you send us that? Because I wanted this reaction that you're giving me right now. I think that I think they would find it funny. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You should actually, you know, you should actually send it to them because I think they would get a kick out of it. Um, <laughs> I mean, you, if they, uh, you know, you could uh, add a, like a barbecue one too, just to make it more likely to make it on air. Yeah, because they we'll know. See. Yeah, but um, it, it reminds me of. Uh, when uh the jelly belly um harry potter uh, jelly beans came out mm, uh, mm, 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 the birdie bots every flavor beans yeah 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 i i picked some up at uh, uh on a, on the way to a trip uh, after my first uh, year at college uh and my parents went to uh state park uh as like a family trip and uh and so my dad knew that I was eating jelly beans and uh, I was purposely saving all the bad ones. And I uh -huh. handed him uh, and he asked for one because I, I usually if I had it like, was hand, inevitable. Usually, yes. Yes. And so I handed him uh, the dirt one. <laughs> and it takes a moment and then he's like, what are these <laughs> that I, of course, I had to, to laugh and uh, show him what they were. Oh, okay. 
But yeah, um, this is uh, the cob I was talking about on the, on the show not too long ago. Uh, when we were discussing the YTPC, the one that I was making for uh, this year's Cobb Foolery Contest. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it didn't happen. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is the pipe that I was going to enter. You can see it's not filled here. Yeah. But it's not letting smoke out. So it's sealed enough. It's just not, it's not pretty. It was just one of those things that, you know, I... Just didn't didn't finish it. It was going to be like a bent version of the the one I entered last year. Mm. That's too bad. Yeah, but it looks nice. Thank you. Yeah, if that, I saw that on the market, uh, that would be a cob that I would be uh, a, a shape that I would pick up. Because I like the Rob Roy style of uh, shape, and I have, but I haven't uh, picked one up yet. That's kind of uh, in that style. Well, here we are. We're like almost twenty minutes into the episode. I, I feel like talking about Avatar now would be pointless. Uh, I, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, we we did have perfect intentions of you know talking about uh, what was the name of the episode again? Because I said it wrong. Uh, the uh, deserter. The deserter. I said defector. Off air. Yeah. That's why I asked, just so everybody knows the context of that. Um, we we had intended on talking about it because you know I asked Greg to correct me on <laughs> on the on on the episode before we even got on the thing. And then all of a sudden, we're talking nothing but tobacco and pipes. So, you're welcome, pipe people. You get a yes. bonus pipe episode this week. And and no, I'm not releasing. We're not releasing a second episode, so we can talk about the deserter either. Hmm. But I guess uh, that makes me wonder. Like, are are there any blends that uh, haven't been necessarily created that you know of that you would be interested in? Uh, checking out uh or or what someone would attempt to make no i don't have anything off the top of my head gotcha let's see like well for me um i i would actually like to see more american companies kind of try to uh create something in the vein of a uh, of a lakeland blend and try their hand at it i know uh glp uh, uh, does it uh with uh stonehenge yeah i've got some of that staring me right in the face right now yeah but that's about uh it that i know of there's just a lot of uh it, it's interesting just how different the kind of like flavor interests there are between the Americans and uh, our friends uh, from overseas. Yeah. um, The American taste even differs from the Canadian one because It's uh, basically the same. It's basically the same, like you like for the European style, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we that's what we get. Um, the one the last time Brian Levine was on this pipe life when I was, we were talking about that specifically because he 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 said, yeah, you'd be used to that, Dave, because that's what you get. And that's when I had to say, no, that's not what I get because I buy all my stuff from your country and have it shipped here. <laughs> <laughs> But I did confirm what he said, because yeah, like the, the 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 Canadian tobacco styles, whether it be cigarettes or or pipe tobacco, is more European in its flavor and its and its cut and whatnot. Like you take a take a pack of Players Light cigarettes and put them up against a pack of Marlboros, you're going to get two totally different flavors because the Marlboros are burly based. 
and the players are Virginia based. That's just how it is. Yeah. Well, even just like I, I was at actually thinking of stuff like uh, candy per se, uh, uh, or just like regular flavors, because like over in Europe they they use more stuff like rose and uh, lavender and uh, other other type of flavors, and uh, you don't kind of get those type of flavors in the U.S. No, but you want to know something I just found out recently is um, quite legal in the U.S., but illegal in, I think, Great Britain? What's that? Red sprinkles. Because of the dye? No. Huh. I don't think so, anyway. It might be a dye. I, I don't know. But specifically red spring... No, because they use the same color that, that dye is used in other things that are legal in... In, in the UK. It was one of those things that popped up on my news feed about a, about a bakery whose signature cook, uh, signature dish was, or, or pastry was uh, in jeopardy because uh, they buy their sprinkles in bulk from the US because they're so much cheaper even once you get them shipped across the ocean than the uh, and they taste better than the offerings they have available to them. Now, yeah. just, just to be, be fair, folks, I may be getting the country wrong here, as I'm not 100% sure. It's been a few weeks since I read this. But I just found it fascinating that red sprinkles specifically uh, are illegal in another country across the seas. I mean, I believe it. Well, I believe it, too. I, I just, yeah. just fascinated by it. Yeah, no, it, it is... It is interesting that the weird things that they do. Because, like, um, even in, like, uh, the U.S., well, like, even when you're looking at candy, like, you know, in Europe, you have uh, Kinder, uh, Kinder uh, mm -hmm, chocolate, mm -hmm. where it has a, uh, I think it's a Kinder Eggs uh, where, like, you get uh, uh, a toy inside, and uh, you ca they can't sell those Kinders to uh, in the U.S. because of a patent. Is that what that's all about? It's a patent issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I was wondering what the, what the what the thing was with that because, oh, Scott. Markwood of uh, Markwood Ben's Breakfast Club and Aristocab. They he put videos up before. If whenever he comes over here, he he uh, buys up as many Kinder eggs as he can get his hands on. Not for the not for the chocolate, for the toys that are inside, and he takes them back to his grandkids. Right. Because it's something yeah, it's... That, he, that he can only get here, that he can't get there, even though like we're literally a hop, skip, and a jump away. Right. Yeah, no, um, it might be a Hershey's thing. Hershey's is ruthless, uh, with their, uh, um, you know, corner of the market. Uh, I know, like, uh, Cadbury chocolate in Ireland can't sell their, uh, chocolate in the United States. They have to have their stuff, uh, that they want sold in the U.S., I think, made here. Or, like, used, uh, that like that it's a different chocolate because like uh the chocolate that's made in like ireland and europe and, and all the other places is made with a uh, uh milk whereas like hershey's chocolate in the u.s is made with water and uh and therefore like i i've had both and i much prefer um the overseas chocolate compared to you know, the offerings here Hmm. Fascinating. I know. Yeah. No, it, the whole thing, it's just uh, <laughs> uh, things that I don't understand, uh, but uh, that I find frustrating. So, does that mean if you see a Hershey's milk chocolate bar, they're lying to you? That's a good point. Um, 
there might be a little bit of milk in there, but it's not like the main, like the main, um, like the main uh, substance in it. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't put it beyond them. But I, I do think we have laws about uh, like false advertising uh, on some things. Actually, what it is is there has to be a certain percentage of milk in the product in order to be called milk chocolate. Mm. Thank you for the thank you, Matt Patton Food Theory. Well, I know there's uh, more water in, in her, it, from what I understand. I could be there, wrong. There is, a, there is l less milk in a milk chocolate bar than you would expect to be in a milk chocolate bar. Yeah. A bunch less. I don't know the exact number, so I, I won't quote them, but go over the food, the food Theory channel on YouTube, and you'll find something very similar to what I was saying. Yeah. Because that's, that's where I got the information from myself. And... Gotcha. Well, let's see. So far tonight, we've referenced Country Squire Radio. Another couple, another YouTube channel. Avatar, we did at least speak of it. What's next? Let's name drop uh, the Briar Report. Yeah, why not? Hi, Phil. Long time, no doc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hope I hope everything is going well. Sorry that I rant, <laughs> well, retweet more things about uh, things that frustrate me about politics and uh, pipe stuff. I need to. Uh, he uh, lamented the other week that uh, you know not not about the other stuff that I post, but just that uh, he used to. I used to. Post, yeah, yeah, I uh, saw that my, tweet. My pipe stuff more, and uh, I was like, yeah. Uh, the the hard part is just um you know with smoking at night and into the garage I, I the creative side of me wants to have like a, you know a different location every every time that I post a picture uh online and I get that I don't necessarily have to uh post it but uh you know it uh uh it's just easy I meant to actually do one last night but I I kind of forgot to Just get a green curtain and put it up behind you and learn how to use editing software and you can have a different location every time. <laughs> you can be smoking on the moon. My uh, pipe band, uh, they're uh, practicing for uh, an online competition coming up. And uh, so, and so they have to just play in front of a, a camera. They were trying to figure out where they wanted to film, and I suggested that they film it in front of a green screen, and that they can just kind of do, you know, uh, all these like exciting kind of like uh, uh, backgrounds for while they uh, uh, while they play. Yeah, it's, it's not hard to do. It's a little bit more complex than what I do for this show, but. Uh, and you need a slightly better editing program than the one I use, but it's doable. They could do it. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of editing programs, the one that I normally use came back online the other day for some strange reason and just decided to quit on me last week, and I reloaded it this week, and it's working. Thank God, because it took like an hour to render last week's last week's video or two weeks ago's video, depending on the gap between then and now. You know, I've heard uh, that there have been uh, people having a lot of trouble with uh, different recording or, or editing software. The as of late, I think because of a recent update on Windows. But I, I heard some uh, one of the YouTubers I listened to was complaining about and, and uh, another one agreeing with them. And, and I thought, oh, I wonder if that's uh, maybe what's uh, been kind of one of the things that's been plaguing uh, Dave. Uh, it it could be because, I mean, 
Well, you know as well as I do, we're going back to talking heads, but I stopped because I had a syncing issue, and then I updated to Windows 11, and the syncing issue stopped. Hmm. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's just one of those things that kind of happened. And then at the same time, I can no longer ask to access Minecraft Java. Uh. I don't, don't know why, because... It's totally Microsoft compatible, and Microsoft basically owns it now, and mm -hmm. they're offering it free on Game Pass. I already own it, but, you know, I go to start it up, and then the thing, po the launcher pops up, and the the, uh, the screen goes away, but when I mouse over, over the icon on my bar, it tells me that it's there and shows me the start screen. I don't know. I've uninstalled it, reinstalled it. I just come to accept that it's on my system somewhere and I can't play it. So I'm stuck with Bedrock. Not that the Bedrock edition is is bad. I just prefer the Java one because it can do certain things that I learned that I can't do in Bedrock. So, Yeah. Is the Bedrock one the one that you can play cross-platform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where okay. if we wanted to play together, we could. Whereas, yeah. whereas Java, we could, but... Not if you're on Bedrock, and I'm on Java. But that sucks. I had some uh, some builds I was going to go back to, and now now doc, my now my Doctor Alien character uh, that I'm uh, that I'm doing Minecraft videos with is never going to get home because his home's on Java. Curse you, Bill Gates. Unless, of course, I can somehow get a hold of Azuma Void from the Hermits from Hermitcraft and uh, get him to teach me to convert the world into Bedrock because they do that with the Hermitcraft worlds. There's a way to do it. Yeah. I guess maybe you can consider this uh, what happened in the uh, season cliffhanger for uh, your character's story. Oh no, the character story is uh, um, still continuing on uh, on the Flashcraft server, actually. Hmm. Bedrock still, but you know he's 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 jumped over there. Yeah, that's the great thing about an interdimensional being, being with, the, with the right technologies, jumps anywhere he wants. I'm currently rebuilding my machine <laughs> on the server. Because unlike the TARDIS, it doesn't come with you. It just puts you down, and you have to rebuild it every time. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of um, the third Doctor, uh, John Pertwee. He had, his uh, Doctor was actually Earthbound for a couple of seasons as he uh, fixed the TARDIS. Because um, they wanted a little bit more of a... Uh, not grounded, but more earth focused uh kind of thing. I mean they still had like aliens showing up and other things, but uh they wanted to use uh I think unit more. I see. Which is like their police kind of people. All right, so for the final recap, we have Name Drop tonight, Country Squire Radio, Food Theory, Avatar, Hermitcraft, Doctor Who. And there was another one in there that I made offhandedly that I can't remember now. But we, Don't forget Briar Report. Oh, yes, and the Briar Report. This has just been a shameless episode of Name Drops. And also, uh, don't forget Brian Levine. With uh, yeah, but he had a legitimate story that I told you. I wasn't just name dropping him for the sake of it. <laughs> but still, and that's at least another name that we can put on there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to write that list down after we after we get off air. Okay, so <laughs> these are all the hashtags that have to go in <laughs> in the social media. So I was, uh, I saw one of your tweets while I was scrolling past uh, uh, something that Pipe and Tamper posted uh, for their podcast, uh, for his podcast. Yeah. 
Uh, I was just uh, going for another name drop. Oh, it's the pipe and tamper now. Okay. We are just shameless tonight. Mm hmm. And then this pipe life. We, we name drop them. Yeah, in the same time, we in the same time as Brian Levine. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and everybody, don't forget to check out the newly rebranded TV Talk from Flash TV Talk. Nice. Since I mentioned Bo earlier. I was say they rebranded from the Flash. They have been going on moving. You know how uh, we've been, you know, we, we started with pipes and then we moved on, or started with shows, moved into pipes, and, you know, combined the two? Yeah. Yeah, they they basically... You know, we talk about pretty much anything we're watching. Like we pick something, and they're doing the same thing because they, they've been doing it already. Um, instead of just Flash, they were doing uh, panel to screen, and they started doing uh, like the Disney streaming shows, like the Marvel ones mm -hmm. and whatnot. So they've just taken it from Flash TV Talk to TV Talk. Yeah. It's a yeah, sort of like we went from... Uh, out of the speed force to syndicated pipe club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause really the flash okay. is, uh, is winding down. I mean, I don't expect to be much past season eight. There's rumors, but I, I really think they should just, you know, quit while they're ahead. Mm -hmm. Cause they've already gone downhill once recovered from it. And they're looking they're teetering, man. They're getting, they're getting some really good episodes in, and then they're bombing bad on some of them, too. Now, granted, COVID does have something to do with some of that. Right. But they, uh, we'll see how this, uh, this new, uh, five episode arc of theirs, theirs goes. Like the first, uh, first little bit of season eight is uh, own five episode crossover miniseries. With uh, other shows, uh... other characters, but no, it's totally a Flash storyline. They're not hmm. doing the, uh, the the crossover thing because most of the shows they crossed over with are done. I uh, I don't know about Legends being done, but Supergirl's done, uh, Arrow's done, Black Lightning's done. I think that about somehow, covered it. Yeah, somehow Bat Batwoman is still going. Yeah, that's the other one. I don't know how when they, when they switch from Ruby Rose to the I I I I don't know I wasn't big on how how they were handling Batwoman anyway and I only watched uh, most of maybe half the first season but I don't think I could go to it now because totally different character yeah ah uh, that is uh that show is something. But anyway, I think that's about a, about all the name dropping we can do for one night without just, you know, sitting here and just purposely dropping names of everything under the sun. Yes. So before we, we lose all of our listeners, if you want to keep in touch with us throughout the week, you can always find me on any social media. The link to my link tree with all of my socials will be in the description down below and, you know, included with all the all the social media stuff that gets put out on the various channels. Greg, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, even though I don't know why you would, um, at the underscore Badger Piper. Uh, feel free to follow that if you want to see me retweet a bunch of things that I either uh, agree with or find funny. Um, uh, again, I... <laughs> I want to try to find more happy things and more uh, other things, but uh, man, sometimes it's uh, I can't help myself, uh, which is why the internet can be a bad thing. Um, I also uh, have an Instagram at the Badger Piper, and uh, that is just all kind of like either uh, pipe stuff or bagpipe stuff. Uh, so follow that instead. 
And if you just want to go, you know, old school, not real old school and snail mail us, you can always email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com, the recycled email address that we keep toting out there, but nobody ever sends anything to. Not even the Nigerian princes are emailing us anymore. I think we pissed them off after that last last round with we, we, we talk, said about them. <laughs> Well, uh, event. Hopefully, one day we uh, someone will find that email and email us. We shall see. Because you know, I decided that after we said all that, and we are going to show everybody. Just bear with me. I'm going to check reverse flash time at gmail dot com to see if anybody has actually emailed it. Because that would be hilarious. Not we're not reserve. There we go. If we said that I got done saying that, and then there was an email sitting there that we needed to read. It's been so long that I forgot the password. Okay, not that one either. Uh, that just reminds me of... Uh, that one was typed in wrong. We had to update uh, one of our accounts uh, with a payment card a few weeks ago, and I could not remember the password for it. And it was just this nightmare scenario. I think it all got sorted out, but... Oh, uh, good, good. Uh, it was just for toll stuff. Which, uh... I actually didn't even need to anyway, because uh, somehow... Uh, the account updated with the new information and uh, it was just like, well, that's annoying, but uh, kind of cool too. All right. All right. Here's the rundown. Here's the rundown. Uh, 32 Twitter, Twitter alerts. Nothing, nothing important. Just Twitter alerts. You, you know, Twitter said this yeah, today. Yeah. One security alert. That's for me signing in just now. And a bunch of ads for games. You nice. know, I don't, I've never used this email address for anything other than the podcast. So, again, nobody has emailed reverse flash time at gmail.com. Please, somebody email it. Even if it's just to say, please shut up about talking about the fact that nobody has emailed you at this account. And of course, you can find us on Twitter, in, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, and Apple and Spotify and all those things where um, you know you can get your podcasts. And be sure to leave us a five a five star review. Yeah, you know, if we ever do a contest in the future, we should incorporate uh, emailing our email address as one of the things to be able to have to get entries for it. Or that's just the whole contest. Email the thing and you win a prize. <laughs> uh, well, I, I thought about that too, but... Uh, I'll send you, know, you all a penny to... from Canada. There you go. It cost me more than the penny to send it to you, but it cost me $15 to ship a freaking penny, but still, it might be worth it. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, with that being said, we'll wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Have a good night.